Ooh, look at that. Well, that obviously ain't open enough. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony. This is Tony's Tractor Adventure. We've got Tanya behind the camera and the gizmo walking around here. And today we're going to do something fun. I mean, we do, we work so much, but we still have to have some fun. And even in our fun, we still work. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to be doing some deer food plots and working on my deer viewing area. And just up front, uh, Google and YouTube are not very friendly to uh, Second Amendment rights and also uh, freedom of speech. They're kind of you know, not really friendly to freedom of speech. So uh, we are going to be starting our hunting uh, videos over on uh, Rumble. Now, Rumble is very, uh, very free speech, very Second Amendment. So anything that has to do with hunting and, and things that sling freedom pills out uh, will be over on that channel. And um, we will uh, try to update that throughout this year, especially here coming into the, to the fall, because a lot of this, what we're doing today is going to be preparation for, for deer hunting. And there's so many people that are, you know, they get offended so easily if you say anything remotely. They just get offended too easy. I don't know what else to say. Anyway, let me show what we're going to do today. Come on. So here we got the bighorn truck down here. Got a bunch of stuff in the back of that, and we're going to be using the spreader. I'll show you that later on and uh, put on the back of that. But I'm going to clear my deer viewing lane out a little bit more. Now, this summer, we have periodically through the, the year, when we've had time, we've come down here and worked on this and cleared it out a little bit more and more. So I, I did make a mistake. I stacked all of this brush right here, and this is kind of in the way where I, I want my, my deer viewing lane. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is take the tractor and we're going to move this pile uh, over into this center and we'll burn that this fall. Uh, so that'll be a after deer season, maybe this, this, you know, next coming spring, maybe February, you know, when the deer's, deer hunting is done. But we're going to put it here behind us out of the way. And I'm probably going to end up taking this deer stand down right here and put it on a tree further back, maybe on that one right over there. And I'm going to take this tree down. And the reason being is it was hit by a dozier or, or a skitter when this was cut. And it's hollow in the center. So it's, it's, it's a semi-healthy tree, but it's still, I don't feel bad about cutting it down. And we'll put it on sawmill. So anyway, this is going to end up eventually being a pasture. So if Tanya, if you can come stand right here and we'll look down what I'm calling my, my deer viewing lane. I got a couple of stumps here and there that I need to knock down. And I'm going to take down this tree, which is fairly healthy. This is another one that's been damaged at the bottom and it's hollow, so I don't feel bad about that. And if you'll look down through there, there's two, small, two or three more small trees that are in the middle that are kind of sickly. I'm going to take those down. Uh, and this is going to be my, it's going to be a straight shot. After we get that done, we're going to till this whole entire area. I've got... Uh, some big bags of food plot seed that I got at Tractor Supply. And then we're going to be putting some uh, uh, buck bourbon deer attracted down through here. We'll start doing that and getting the deer used to coming down through here. Last year we did a small food plot and they just absolutely wore it out. We've not done anything down here other than clear this out. And there's just tons of deer tracks down through here. There's all kind of wildlife coming in and out. But before we get going too much further... Um, We'll just, I'll show you a couple of shots of me moving this stuff. I love the big T-474. It's got a lot of lifting power. We'll just come in here. It won't probably take me 10, 15 minutes to lift this out of the way. And then we'll start taking the trees down that we want to take down. All right, let's get to it. So I want to try this magic trick that I've been using. And what I do is I click my fingers and stuff disappears or happens the way it's supposed to. So... I'm going to see if I can just make this disappear with my magic. See if my magic is strong. And just like that, it's gone. Now, the reality is that took me about 30 minutes to do with the tractor and Gizmo and Tanya were here for every step of the way. We've got a little bit of footage we'll show you right here. But this really opened it up. And last year, right here was a, 
a pretty good food plot because when I started this little pile, it was just a small pile and I did not have that open over there yet. So you can swing around here and you can see how much we moved over here into the middle. So this fall when all the leaves are already gone, we can burn this off. And the fact we moved it again, a lot of the dirt that was piled up with it, with the roots have dried and fell off. So there's a lot less dirt in that, which is gonna make a lot, lot easier burning. So that'll probably be our burning pile back here for now. So now we're just gonna go ahead and start popping these trees down. So I'm not sure that I'm gonna take that deer stand down yet. If I don't, I'm definitely gonna take this little grove right here down. And uh, these are like not really wonderful trees. And I don't know what happened, but I got into a sweat bee nest apparently, cause there's a thousand of them on me. And uh, anyway, so we'll go ahead and take these. I'll start with that one in the middle, take it down. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna take this tree down right here cause in the summer, I mean, it's, it's a scrub tree. It don't need to be there, but you know, it's just a lot of work too. It ain't hurting being there either. So during this, during this, during the winter, that'll be really, uh, not a, not much of a view problem. Try to lay this one down that way, but be aware. Don't be behind it just in case it falls the wrong way. This one's hollow. So I, I, it's got a natural lean that way, but I don't know for sure. That's really dead in the center. Holes right here. So I've cut it up in manageable pieces. Get the tractor to take it out.
still got to take a couple more trees down and uh, evaluate this now how much more it opened up just by taking that one tree down. I really don't want to take this tree down. It's really healthy and it's a, uh, I believe that's an elm tree. So I don't like taking down healthy trees. So I believe we're going to let that one go. We're going to go on down and knock that one further down. If we get time today, we'll come back with a stump grinder and hit this, but I don't, I just, I really want to get the mulcher put on the back of this so I can come through and beat this up. Now, if you have a tiller, uh, if you set your tiller to a really low cutting depth, you can come back here and use it in something like this, but you still take the chance of maybe breaking a tine off. We're blessed in the fact that we have a four foot uh, mulcher and we can set it up where it will actually uh, break and skim the ground about an inch, inch and a half. And that's going to be really nice to come in here, knock this all down, smooth this out, chew some more of the little, little sticks up. And then we'll be able to throw the seeds and fertilizer down and then come back and the it has chains on the front of the uh, mulcher. So we can just come back and just drag the mulcher around and plant the seeds that way. We don't even have to change implements. I could also back drag with the, uh, the grapple, but I think the mulcher will be really fine. All right, let's go down to the next one and, and take that tree down. So what I've decided to do, I really want to keep that tree. And I went down further at this deer stand and that tree is really in the way. And it didn't dawn on me that the deer stand does not have to stay on that tree. I can move it. So I'm going to take down this little tree here, which is already just, it's just tore all to pieces. It's got, it's hollow in the, in, in the stump. It's just not, a, it's a junk tree. And I can move my deer stand right here uh, on this tree and get an absolutely amazing uh, view down the, the lane here. And uh, so I think that's going to be the easiest thing. Just move the deer stand over to this big tree here. I think that is a tulip poplar. Yeah. Is that tulip poplar? I can't see it from here. Yes, that's a tulip poplar right here. So, and I don't know what that little one is right there. I think it's tulip poplar also. Anyway, so we're just going to take down this little tree right here. Tractor. That's close. That was just little limbs. It wouldn't hurt nothing, but that vine was up there in the top, held it like a cable. That's a big hole right there. Who dug that hole right here? Oh. That little tree got in the way of a couple of shots last year.
So this is an old cherry tree right here that the wind blew really hard and broke the top of it out. And we thought that the, the probably that it was bad. And when we went to move it, it was a solid piece of cherry, uh, black cherry. So we're hoping that this piece of cherry right here, which still has some limbs on it, which indicates there is some live in it. But we're hoping that it's not uh, rotten on the inside. And if it's not, that's going to yield some really nice wide uh, cherry boards on the sawmill. So we'll take this down and see if we can salvage that log. That's approximately, I'd say, 10 foot tall. And I'm hoping that, I'm hoping, let's just hope, at least get eight foot out of it. It'd be nice to get some eight foot cherry out of it. As big as that tree is, this could actually be some, what I would call a uh, furniture grade cherry. At that, because there's no limbs down here. All right, big boy, you get to move. You know, let me put some fuel in this thing. I've been running it pretty, pretty hard, so. So I'm really digging this big horn truck thing just because, well, it's a truck and uh, I can do, do stuff like this. I want to go ahead and get some fuel in this because I didn't want to, uh, I don't want to get halfway through the tree and run out of fuel. I knew, I knew it was getting pretty low. Not as bad as I thought it was. This echo sips the fuel. Still, it's better to be safe than sorry. I'm not, I'm not a pro with this. I don't do this every day. This is a how Tony does it channel and not how to do it channel. Well, the bugs are ferocious down here. I wonder when it's all said and done how much time and money and effort we're going to have into clearing this land down here for the, you know, we probably could have just got a bunch of goats and done it. We're going to put goats down here anyway. I think we should get goats next year. So back down where I tell you I'm going to move the deer stand over. I think I want to build a four post deer stand there that substitutes as a barn. So up the roof is actually going to be the floor of the deer stand. But the it's going to be the roof of the shelter. yeah shelter for for the for goats or whatever we end up having down here. Dirt. So the chain's still sharp. Managed to keep the chain out of the dirt. But right here, I see some rot on the pieces that fell out. You know, we'll just see what we get. There's no height to this, it's only eight foot tall. We're gonna cut straight across, use a wedge. Hopefully it'll fall that way. May not fall anyway, it may just sit there. Which would be okay, I can just push it over the tractor. Cut it just a hair too much. It sat down on my blade. But it'll be okay. Oh, look at that. That's solid cherry. I should have cut that lower. I, I could man, I wasted a foot of cherry. I just, I don't know, my gut told me there was, it was going to be dead, dead. Son of a... I think I'll go ahead and pick this up with a trasher and then chop the end of it off. 
I can because I'm probably going to end up having it looks like it's pretty rough right here. We'll just see how far down the the rock goes. So it got a poison ivy vine up the side of it, and cherry does not like poison ivy. Let's see if I get over here and not hit your side by side. see what kind of wood we've got i'm hoping we're gonna get at least a six foot piece of cherry in there that would be awesome i got some little pieces over here but they got rod in them and i'll just start taking cuts so uh, that you know it may surprise me when we have good wood all the way out here be about six foot maybe yeah maybe not quite six foot but it'll still make a like some really nice furniture and be probably over here on this side it goes up and it's kind of rotten but we got that big we did get that big log that big cherry log out of this that was it's got it's about 12 foot long I think like maybe in the post and beam house we build have a cherry like a some cherry log. All right, we'll set this log off to the side, bring it up. So this is uh, the last tree we're gonna take down today and it's really sick. Uh, it's probably the most hollow tree that we've taken down. It's got some dead limbs in the top. It's broke off at the top. There's a couple of things that could go wrong. And uh, it's got a natural lean this way, so we're gonna let it fall in the ditch. And if it does well, we'll just leave it in the ditch. Because this ditch is a dead ditch. It doesn't, it, water doesn't go through it anymore. But this dude is really hollow. So this is what we call a widow maker. <laughs> hollow it don't have any hint, way to hinge it just sit down on my sit down back on my sawmill i mean on my chainsaw so huh yeah there's a lot of weight over here i didn't account for it has the tree has a natural lean that way i can actually push it by hand so it's really teetering right now so i'm just gonna take the tractor and just push it over i don't recommend this again this is what tony does and not what you should do. This is not a how-to channel. So that went right in the ditch. I'll go ahead and take some of those tall limbs down so that it doesn't get in my sight, line of sight, when I want to look down through here. 
No damage done to the saw. That's good. I like it. Looks like there might have been something of li of, of that was alive in that. And I cut it out in, in two because there's a bunch of blood in here. Could be a fungus that was made the red or or I cut a snake in half. So I'm gonna push, you know, can you you can see the pasture now, I'm pretty sure. You know, it's just totally this was this was all woods. It was all just like this. I think this used to be pasture a long time ago. Uh then it grew back up. And so what I'm gonna do is push this all the way back to the hillside where there's live springs over there. That'd be for our livestock, and then there's a big a big ditch over here. Uh, creek runs year round so there's water on this side as well and our property goes a good way that way and a good way that way so anyway i think now it's time to do some food plotting So now we've got all our stumps ground off. It looks really good. I left this hole here is another one where I like say we're probably six, eight inches down. It's a beautiful thing about that stump grinder. You can really get it under and basically get down to the roots or if you really need those roots up, you can just come in with a grapple and take the rakes and just kind of rip the roots out of the ground. I'll show you right behind me where I did it right over here. So I raked all these rakes. I raked all these roots up out of the ground so I could literally till this right here. Um, if I really wanted to. And uh, what I'm going to do now is come through with the, the uh, mulcher and use it as a, I want to mulch all the little stuff up and I'm also going to prep the ground. So it's going to come through and just beat the crap out of the ground about an inch and a half down. It's going to fluff the ground really nice and then we'll come back and put seed and fertilizer over it. And then we'll come back with the, either the back drag it with the grapple, just kind of drag over it to bury the seeds or we'll drag it over with the mulcher because it's got a bunch of chains on it and we can do that too and it do the same thing. So let's get started. Because this mulcher turns like this, so the underside is always throwing stuff forward. You can come in and drop and go forward and drop and go forward and it's constantly mulching up the little stuff in the toothpicks. It's also acting kind of like a broom and it's carrying everything one direction. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of start on this end and kind of sweep my way down to the other end, preparing this whole section and this is gonna be I'm probably going to back in here and get a little bit of uh, a little bit more. Last time I was over here, it's a little dry. So probably work on this area a little today too. And then we'll get that uh, food plot started because we got some rain in the forecast and that's what it's all about.
So I'm definitely going to need my neti pot today because I breathe a lot of dust. Probably should have a mask on. But part of farming, if, you, if you're if you going to do this, you're going to get some dust. Except Gizmo Dog. He's sophisticated and he sits in the seat. Anyway, so let me try to show you what we found, what we've done. You can see down through here, we've, that's totally day and night. This is almost pasture ready. Probably another couple of passes with the mulcher and then come back with uh, probably the flail mower over a few years and then maybe a, 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 a box blade or something to level this out. And it will be a pasture. I mean, it's close to being a pasture right now. I mean, this will pass for a pasture for some people already. Uh, it's just little pieces of stuff that's been chewed up and that's going to rot away really quick. We are going to have to throw the nitrogen to it just because simple fact is, is all this debris has to be uh, eat away and it needs nitrogen to do that. But I found, uh, I, I got the sunlight just hit perfectly and we have a hill that goes down. There's a, these are the, these are the edge of, this is the edge of where the, the full-time creek runs. It's a stream and there's, there up, up this way, there's several springs that run into this. This runs year round. And I, but I found a place I believe I can cross and go up the other side. We were having a big time problem with that um, in the past, finding a place to cross and go to the top. And uh, look at my boy, right in the water. Spring water should probably taste pretty good. Matter of fact, I got mud all thrown in it right now. But well, I thought about putting a bridge here. This is probably a great place to put a bridge. Oh, uh, it's going to take care of that stuff the first rain that comes along. But I was thinking about doing like a bridge across here, getting some big beams. At least we can put the, you know, probably not the trash here, but we can put side by sides across this. And if you look up through there, you can, you can see, um, I almost see where we cleared that out. I think it's right back over here where that, I got stuck that one time. Yeah, we're back into the spring. That was, so we got to stay away from that. But I think we can find our way up this hill right here. And the, what I'm looking for are big trees. If you see small trees, that means that there's probably spring there and it can't sustain the weight and the tree will grow up a little bit and fall over. If you see a big tree, uh, that generally indicates that there's pretty solid ground around it. So that's kind of where I've seen these big trees right here. And sure enough, there's a big tree right through here. And then this one. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't have any idea. what. Uh, it was alive for a long time after it fell. Yeah. I wonder if it could be... Uh, I wonder if it could be put on a sawmill. It's off the ground. It's off the ground. Because right there where it's kind of close up right there, mm -hmm. it goes up this whistle, but all everything else I can see is like... I don't see any kind of leaves that would let me know what it is. You know, I just can't, you know, I can't tell what it is. I don't know that. But pretty much from right here down could be yeah. pretty it's decent log. Possibly. Anyway. It's kind of off the ground, so you maybe get lucky with that. Well... I want to think that it might be a tulip poplar that is that was sickly because this root system here was part of that tree, which is tulip poplar. It's like they split apart from each other. But it, maybe that maybe not. Who knows? I don't know. Can't tell. All right, so let's. Uh, we're out of fuel. So, but I thought that was pretty cool finding this little place where we can go across. Down here, there's more than one place. So we can get maybe to the cabin, find a way to get to the cabin from here. There's still parts of our land that we've never walked on. It's just, it's been that, it's been that grown up and that thick. But we don't want to, we don't want to develop all of it, but we want to have little paths and trails and just keep it interesting. Nice, nice place right there. Nice shady place. So what we got going on here is we have got the Boss Buck electric spreader, and uh, it's out of the way, and it hooks into the hitch on the back of the side by side, and we're going to be able to spread our seeds and our uh, our fertilizer using this thing. All right, so this is the Buck Boss spreader, and we put this extension on it because this this side by side here has got a long bed. And I think a normal side-by-side -side would be, the other side, the, the 550 wouldn't be a problem. 
that extension, I think that's going to be the, the winning ticket here. And that'll give us enough space out that we can um, put uh, this on. I think it does a good job. All right, so here's the power cord. And I'll do something more permanent. But right now, I'm just going to run this up onto the seat and hook it right directly to the batteries. Well, that's just the ground wire, so it ain't going to matter. All right, so we'll plug... All right, this it's plugged up to power. How do you control it? Oh, the remote control. So I got that right here. It looks like green is on and we'll come check it out. So this spins around and throws it out. Green is on, red is red is off, and then here's the you turn open this up and you can adjust how much how much comes out. We'll start right there. If you look down in here, you can see the the little I don't know what you call that. It's a kind of like a valve. The more you turn it. That's wide open. We'll start like right here. You got to be big enough for your seed to get through. You know what I didn't bring? My knife. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, cut it open with a chainsaw. I think this fertilizer is going to be pretty small. So I think we'll be all right with that. I just got a new knife yesterday. Then lost it. I need to do that thing that Joe does where I have a knife of the day because I always lose them. All right, here we go. And I may need a real man to get this in. Oh, they probably can't hear it because all the rattling I'm doing. There's a magnet on that. So. Well, that obviously ain't open enough. Hey! Shoot it slings it out there, don't it? Ow! That hurts. <laughs> don't look directly into. Well, I'm over here. Yeah. Don't look directly into. So now all I gotta do is drive around and turn this thing on and have at it. So let's do. Let's do it. Did it not working? Just gotta get the settings right for that.
I can see it flinging out there. So like that, so when you need to turn around, you can just turn it off. Let's look and see how much it's thrown out. So basically it'll fill up till it can't fill up anymore. And it stops when you turn it off. So it's kind of clogged itself up and it don't unclog itself until it starts spinning again. So it's feeding real good. But we got a lot of fertilizer. I'm gonna have to make a lot of or either that or I'm gonna have to turn it up some. We're gonna grow the best weeds in the world. Hey, can you go out there and get some of me coming towards you? Walk real close behind me. About go to, down the center does this. Oh no. Yeah, it slid off the seat down. All right, here we go. Just spinning? How about now? All right. I think I might have knocked the wire loose when I moved the seat up. So with this fertilizer, what's happening is if you open the, let me, let me turn the thing off so you can hear. So this fertilizer, the granules are kind of big. And what's happening is if you open up all the way, it kind of stacks up in there like this. And when you turn the, the spreader on, it creates enough of a bind that it blew the fuse. So you want it, you want it to pour out pretty strong, but not strong enough that it's going to clog the hole up and then not be able to spin. So we'll, we'll test it here. Just barely throwing there. Well, that seems to be pretty good. Now it's stopped. It's going to fill that little plate void up, and that keeps the it can, from just pouring out. And hopefully, when I push this, it doesn't blow the fuse again. I think we've got a winning ticket right there. So, just a little thing you need to know. If you open it wide up on something that's got some substantial size to it, it can clog that hole up. And when you turn it on, there's an initial surge and it'll pop that fuse. So, now our side-by-side -side up at the top of the hill doesn't run right now. I stole the fuse. Throw it. You working? I think we're not open up enough. Give me a place to mount this. 
Oh, now, now it's throwing it. We're doing mega plot. Now what this is, it's a kind of an all-in-one deer feed. We put this in last year and it's got wheat, uh, oats, turnips and annual clover and last year we put that in we had some really good results so i'm gonna put in two bags this year and uh, all up and down through here and i think we did a better spread this time because last time we kind of did it by hand and, and tanya did a really good job but i didn't do so good i just kind of chunked it and now we're just gonna figure out how this is gonna how this is gonna turn out here really i grew up on a farm I just need it. Is that what it is? Is that how it's going to be? So that looks to be about the same size. Over here. So when the after the fields are cut and there's not as much for the, the deer to forage on, they're gonna they're gonna like really come down through here. Last year they just followed in. Uh, they would come in out of this woods from the fields and work their way down through here, just foraging all the way down, and then they go bed down in this hollow. So it's a nice little hollow up here that they bed down at night. So I think this is gonna work the same way as it did last year, I hope so. It made some fine deer viewing. If you guys wanna see more like detailed deer viewing videos, we're gonna be putting that over on our Rumble. So Tony's Tractor Adventure Homestead on the Rumble website. They're a little bit more free with the uh, a little bit more free speech and and uh, and a little bit more pro Second Amendment. You want ride? Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Turn around. Sit down. We're gonna put some seed down. We're... He likes deer too. All right, let's see if it's working. Yeah, I can hear it. You doing it, buddy? smell the grain dust so we've done a, we've used quite a bit probably take three or four passes I could probably open it up a little bit more
What is that? Let's we'll see how it, how it cleared. Well, there you go. Almost. But see all this little stuff here? That's. I believe that is a. Uh, with turnips, little bee turnips left over. No. I see little seeds way. Okay, so we just finished this up. This is the Buck Boss, and uh, what is it? Non-typical. I don't know. Listen, we uh, it did a good job throwing every, the seed out. We were looking up down through here, and you can see it's really even. It throws a long way. So some of it I might actually, you, you almost like you could use a potentiometer on it so that you could slow it down a little bit so it doesn't throw as far, and then turn it up when needed, like a big wide open. But if you're going to do a lot of if you're going to do a lot of food plots, I think this is a viable product because it uh, it definitely flings that stuff out there. So we put out all the fertilizer. And again, if you're going to do a big giant food plots or food plots in multiple locations on your property, this would be, you know, this is a great setup right here. You just come through and throw your seed bags in the back of your side by side and off you go with this thing on your hitch. It took me just a few seconds to hook it up. Cable's long enough. This is a really long side by side. And it had plenty of room for uh, for it on the side by side. Also, it comes with this adapter that you can plug into your your uh, truck, you know, uh, trailer hitch, and it provides power. You turn your lights on on your trailer, and it provides power for this. It only needs like five amps to do it. It's got a ten amp fuse in it, uh, but you can. I did find out you can blow a fuse on this and maybe on your truck too. So the way we did it, I think is the best way for us. We'll just keep using this. So. Listen, we'll get back to you in a uh, probably another video, maybe in another month, and we'll kind of take a peek out here, see how this is going. Appreciate you watching our channel. I know it's a lot of work just for this one food plot, but it's not only going to be a food plot in the future. It's going to be some sort of field down here, some pasture, either goats or whatever. We don't know yet, but we're not wasting our effort. It's it's uh, it's going to be land that will help us uh, provide for our family and gizmo dough. Listen. And the chicken. God bless. Have a great day. Case must seen something. It was chasing something, but I don't know what it is, though. So.